Ennis, um, maybe you can. We'll, sh- we'll switch to your screen. Yes. And you are go. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ennis. Uh, we will talk about uh, some cybersecurity awareness stuff today. Our title is Building a Resilient Digital Kitchen. First, let me introduce you myself. Uh, my name is Enes, I'm from Turkey. Uh, I have been living in Switzerland uh, for about four years. I have a bachelor's degree in math. Uh, I worked seven years as a math teacher, then six years as a journalist, and now working as a cybersecurity analyst. Uh, let's, let's start. Uh, let's talk about the importance of cybersecurity in today's digital landscape. Why cybersecurity is important for us? Because uh, we need to protect our sensitive information. We have lots of information today, and many of them are digital. When things and information becomes digital, that makes these uh, hackable, and we need to protect, we need to secure our information to defend against cyber threats that uh, becomes larger and larger day by day and to protect our in critical infrastructure, maintaining trans, trust and reputation. Uh, this trust and reputation mainly uh, about our companies uh, if we are secure against cyber threats, against cyber attacks. Uh, our customers trust us and we have a good reputation. And uh, compliance with regulations like GDPR, cybersecurity is uh, mandatory for this. Uh, here are some statistics cyber, cyber criminals, cyber attacks, uh, damages, and this damage has, has caused. Here are some uh, statistics from 2021. Uh, you can see yearly, monthly, even for a second it costs 190,000 $190, US dollars per second. And these numbers are getting bigger. Uh, we will talk about uh, cyber security awareness, but uh, it's just one step for this. Uh, our aim should, be a, should have a cyber security culture. Uh, this is a, B, and C, A is awareness, that what we know, and then that becomes uh, our behaviors, uh, what we do, and, and then uh, with uh, repeating that behaviors, that becomes, became a, a, that will become a culture, uh, it's what we believe. Uh, and what is cyber security culture? Uh, it is the beliefs, values, and attitudes that drive employee behaviors to protect and defend the organization from cyber attacks. Uh, drive is important. Uh, it's, it, should, it should come from our inside. Somebody can say us to do this, do this, to secure ourselves, to secure a good company, but it's, uh, when it comes from inside, uh, it will become a culture and uh, it's e- easier to maintain that. The rapid growth of technology has advantages, we all know it. It makes our uh, life easier, more comfortable, but it also brings uh, disadvantages and troubles to us. It, uh, it makes the cyber attacks more sophisticated. For example, uh, most of us use chat GPD, not we use the uh, chat GPD. Cyber criminals also use chat GPD to, to prepare more sophisticated attacks to prepare to develop uh, malware, increase of connected devices, IoTs, Internet of Things. Uh, nowadays, our our cars, our watches, even our refrigerators are connected to the Internet, and that makes them hackable. For example, uh, you have a uh, you have an apartment, and you have a, a smart surveillance cameras, and you don't change their uh, factory settings and their uh, factory setting credentials are admin and admin 1234 and every hacker can hack that in, in a minute and not just you see your uh, house a 
and a, a hacker from China can see what are what you are doing, can see what your children are doing at home. Cloud computing can be more work, uh, especially after the COVID-19. Uh, we work for, uh, remotely or we work hybrid, and that increases the uh, attack surface. We should secure uh, also our home network. Rise of ransomware and data breaches, insider threats, and employee negligence. We will talk more about that employee negligence. If we are not aware what's going on in uh, cybersecurity related, we became an insider threat for our company. Look at that uh, statistic. Uh, it's insane. 95% of all successful cyber attacks is caused by human error. They are hackers nowadays. It's easier to hack people, and they hack people. How do they hack people? It's social engineering. Let's see an example. Hello, Sandy Patterson. Yes, Mr. Patterson. I'm Janine from the Fraud Protection Department of Identical Credit Monitoring Service. We're calling today because, unfortunately, it appears that someone has attempted to steal your identity. Are you kidding me? Gosh, I wish I were. We did catch this in time, however, but I do suggest you taking advantage of our free total protection plan, which safeguards your credit rating against theft and fraud. Yes, please. It is free, absolutely. Just terrific. I went for this plan myself. Mr. Patterson, I'm going to need to verify some information from you. I'm going to need your full name, date of birth, and social security number, please. Sure, understood. Here it comes. With one click or with a phone call, you can lose your, lose your confidential information. Here, Mr. Patterson's bank account is compromised. Uh, here are some other statistics from other two organizations, World Economic Forum and Verizon. People are the biggest risk, the biggest uh, ring of chain. Mm -hmm. Human related cyber attacks and vulnerabilities, what are they? Uh, let's uh, start from the bottom. Lack of reg regular cybersecurity awareness and training. If uh, if you are not aware of what's going on, you will become an insider threat, and you don't have uh, um, you don't have you have weak password. You don't have a strong password. We we all should know that we should have unique password, unique strong password for every logins for every uh, credential. It may not be easy, but uh, I suggest you to use a password uh, manager. And social engineering. Uh, social engineering is hacking people, we will talk about it. What's social engineering? Here is a definition from Wikipedia. It refers to psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. It has some types. Uh, maybe phishing, maybe tailgating, maybe pretesting, pretexting, baiting, impersonation, tailgating. We will uh, talk about some of them and I will try to give examples about them. In social engineering, cyber, cyber criminals uh, mainly ask you uh, about your uh, confidential information, your phone number, your social security number, uh, your password, or something that can be useful to reset your password. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. What kind of dog do you have? I have a small papillon. And what's his name? Jameson. Jameson. <laughs> and where did you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hipfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. And you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my 
chat with them all. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. So I got password yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. How about your Uh, 95. Oh, great. So Jolie, 6, 12, 95. Yes. Got it. <laughs> or someone pregnant, we will talk about and we will see some examples about tailgating. That's tailgating. You, can, you, you shouldn't open a, a door, especially a confidential door, to others and be aware of what's happening. Because mm, people who have malicious intentions are waiting out there. We should be suspicious. That kind of door maybe uh, protects us or protect our company from tailgating. It's also called uh, piggybacking. But uh, cybersecurity awareness and uh, aware of what's going on will help us to protect ourselves from tailgating. And what's phishing? There are uh, some types of phishing, like spear phishing, bailing, smishing, wishing. Uh, phishing is made especially with uh, email. When it's, uh, when it's done to a group of people, it's spear phishing. When it's done to a, a whale, a, what's whale? A CEO or a CTO, it becomes a bailing. When it's done with uh, SMS, with a uh, mobile phone, it's smishing. When it's done with voice, it's wishing. 
uh, phishing emails or phishing uh, SMS are uh, includes an attachment or uh, a clickable link, or it, uh, it uh, or it can it can be there. Uh, it wants to uh, up update your password. You click the link. You go a uh, fake internet site. Some, uh, for example, uh, Facebook, but it's not Facebook. You give your credentials there, and it's gone. You lose your account. Common features of phishing emails, they are too good to be true. Maybe uh, someone uh, write it there, you want an iPhone or something else. They create sense of urgency. They include suspicious hyperlinks. They have malicious attachments. And uh, they are mainly from unexpected uh, emails, from unusual senders, from from for example, you don't have any contact from China and you get a, an email from China. Or you don't have any contact uh, from Nigeria and you, you get an email from someone in Nigeria. It, it's not uh, always with a mail. We, we saw at the beginning Mr. Patterson uh, that was a wishing phone call. Uh, for example, in, uh, in my country, in Turkey, there are lots of uh, wishings uh, nowadays, and even high educated people are believing that uh, that hackers, that human hackers, and they are giving tons of money. It's unbelievable, but even professors they give money to them. They are calling that they are they are saying uh, your identity is used by a terrorist organization, and they are giving you a sense of urgency. <coughs> they don't let you to think. It's it's the most important thing to think about it. What am I doing? Stop and think. And it's, actually, could we maybe stop and take a couple of questions? Because I think people might have a few questions for yeah, these yeah. things. Yeah. Yes, please. If you click one of them and just pause it again, still are we in danger? Uh, sometimes, when if you click, sometimes you can you don't uh, notice it, but you can download a malicious uh, software or a malicious file uh, or when you click it, it takes you at an internet site. You can, you can notice it before you uh, enter your credentials, then uh, nothing happens. But if you don't notice... Okay, how can we understand the current situation? Yeah, for example, uh, that's a phishing. That's a phishing email. Mm -hmm. uh, it's written there: urgent action required. That that gives you a sense of urgency. Here's an uh, here's an email. Look at that. It's that it's not a genuine email. It's, it's it looks like from Microsoft, but it's not from Microsoft. You should uh, look at the domain name. They they put it there uh, a logo of. Uh, Office 365 to, to yeah it seems uh, real but it's not uh, you should read it carefully there are uh, spelling mistakes yes spelling <laughs> mistakes you should uh, yeah you should be careful and please click on the link to verify your account and you are going to the dev domain zx.html not Microsoft and if you click and if you enter your credentials there, you will lose your account. Yes. Any questions? Thank you. You're welcome. And then what happens if you lose your account? Maybe uh, if I'm a hacker, I take your account, for example, uh, I take your Instagram account and I send uh, messages to Ibrahim. Ah, yes, I need money, or uh, I send a link to him, and he clicks, and I take his account, and then I send a message to Oleg, and Oleg clicks it, and I take his account, and uh, I can do same thing from three different accounts, and uh, yeah, people can believe it easily. Yeah, I know Ibrahim, I know Oleg, and they send both. Yeah, it should be true.
Yeah, yeah, but it's not. Okay. I have another question. Yes. What is tailgating? Tailgating? Uh, uh, here is a secure door. Uh, it's physical. Yes, it's yes, on. yes. Oh. Uh, I have a badge to open it. And I, I, I saw Oleg is here. Hey, buddy! You know, I forgot my badge today, uh, but let's go have lunch. Uh, please, please. Uh, can, I, can I see your badge? Where is your badge? I forgot it at home. I'm so sorry. I just, uh, I just oh, man. You know, I'm just working upstairs. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. Dude, I see you every sorry. lunch. I see you every day. I, I shouldn't let him. He's on the You have a typical case that can happen right now with post finance. When you call post finance, they register your voice. If you call again, they will know it's you because it's your voice. There was a case in the UK where people would well, take a video of you or they would call you, register your voice, then they use AI to write another text, then they call the bank. And the bank recognizes your voice. Mm -hmm. They say, Oh, what's your my bank account? Oh, uh, you have money, yeah? Please send the money there. And then, because they recognize you, they will make the payments. Yeah. And typically, when I have, uh, when I, I post finance, I always tell them to delete my, I don't want any mm. print of my box. Because uh, mm. people can find video of me on, on YouTube, mm. and they can take my box and call the bank and tell you. you know. mm. And is it always about money at the end? Yeah. Yes. No. Um, and yet yeah, sometimes uh, credential they, they they go there to uh, to store uh, credentials customer credentials and then uh, they use these credentials for another attack or again for they sell for money. Mm -hmm. May I give an example? Yeah. Uh, just this is just a movie. One guy, one hacker steal some data of some uh, people and the uh, hackers said uh, well, they were uh, hacker were pushing other people to do some uh, some stuff, some uh, bad things, some crimes, killing someone, stealing something and then uh, after first step uh, they are like a puppet in their hand. Okay, that's scary. That's scarier than the money for me. <laughs> I, I did exactly, basically. Mm. I mean, just like if I think my my email account would be taken over, it would be so much hassle, right? I mean, there's so much password resets which go over my email. Mm -hmm. that there's I don't know a hundred services that the attacker can take over. There's, I mean, even just beyond the the, the damage, the direct damage. So, be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I can relate a lot to this um, abstract. So I will need like a landscape, you know, where I can see how, for example, this, you know, is the uh, passwords. I don't know automatically, okay, my mails are connected to this and this. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's like so abstract. Right, yeah. So, um, yeah. And your mails are not important. In yeah, way, right? I even They're don't read them. <laughs> 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 yeah. Why well, I guess you want to read my email. Yeah. So they should be not. <laughs> yeah. And I will also uh, mention later, but uh, multi-factor authentication is also important for these passwords. And uh, there is an, uh, another statistic about that 99% lying 
uh, identity hackers, uh, identity hackings could be stopped by MFA, multi-factor mm -hmm. authentication. It's important. It's a small thing. Actually, just in the interest of time, as it's half past 12 and I know people really need to go at 1, I would suggest we switch to Ibrahim now, if that's okay for you. Mm -hmm. And then we can save the, the, the details for the discussion. And if Ibrahim can do his presentation in 10, 15 minutes, then we still have time for, for some more of this really nice yeah, debate. Is that okay for you? Oh, yeah, that's all okay for me. Thank you, and You're welcome. Thank you. So I think you can just short. Will you also share your slides? Yeah. Okay. My presentation is about uh, secure documents. And today, as you all know, we have uh, we are using so many different type of documents as for our bills, for our certificates, uh, banking account, and we are we receive so many email, so many uh, uh, documents per email, and we uh, we cannot know sometimes are they real, original, or uh, fake. And I'm trying to explain Proxeus in this aspect, because Proxeus can uh, provide you a, <coughs> a valuable document. And you can generate any kind of document, depending on your imagination. We will see uh, some examples of, uh, we will give some examples and then uh, make a demo. For history, uh, 2017 is project's uh, start date. Then uh, in 2018, it became a most successful decentralized autonomous uh, organization in Switzerland. Then uh, association, uh, Proxius Association uh, established. And today, uh, the project maintained by uh, ESPRO if you know, if you don't know, it's, uh, it is uh, an, an Ukrainian uh, company. And this is uh, from the from the previous, uh, one of the previous uh, meetings, which uh, to create another node, another, uh, special, uh, another uh, feature of the application. And this uh, guy, uh, Right side is the founder of the project, photo taken by Oleg. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you can uh, explain some basic uh, or some main uh, information about the application. It's uh, it based blockchain and uh, transform data from form to template and then. Uh, record that to the blockchain and with this way we can validate the documents uh, it can uh, it provide us uh, a lot of flexibility and uh, so many uh, different type of document creation capability ability such as sorry form that yes uh, form is the part that we need to use to import our data to the template. Uh, in this form, uh, there are some validation rules and we don't need to write some, any code for that. This is a local application. You don't need to know any code, just you can come and use, create your own form and template and workload as we will do. And this is an example of workflow, uh, but we will need a simpler one. We can uh, use them for certificates, for proof of validation documents, for ownership of any uh, important like car, like house, or maybe maybe in the feature uh, in the clause feature for marriage or something else. But for that, we need uh, know your customer process, and it is something else. Uh, for verification. Uh, when we create a PDF, 
a document with proxies, we can validate, uh, we can check if it's valid or not. And also, we can ask for signature from other people that, uh, that can make it uh, valid and uh, reflect other people's uh, OK, let's say. And this is an example of uh, uh, like a calculation uh, they did designed by Oleg and for the purpose of this design was calculating a salary for a freelance worker. And this was, I think, a few months ago. Yes, yeah, so it was four months ago. Does, was anyone here at the Thomas's presentation about accounting? So towards towards the end of that presentation, uh, there was kind of like a challenge in the room: who can who can help freelancers decide their salaries? And so we literally made this at the last at that brown bag. We made this quick financial plan. And this is a theoretic and boring uh, side of presentation. And then now we can start for demo. Any questions? Before, yeah. Before that, uh, for last step, this is the uh, domain name that we can use and try now. And if you, uh, after uh, presentation, if you have any suggestion, we can use this page uh, in our GitHub account, uh, github.com, proxies have discussion forum. There is a, a, a title for this presentation, this roadmap, and you can find there and suggest it. There is anything you want to add, and I expect to be. We'll share yeah. all the links in the channel, in the Slack channel as well. Any question? Yeah, I think what would be interesting is to really think a bit about very concrete use cases, like again, like for a hospital, for a university, or for a co-working space. Yeah. Like, where is this useful to have secure documents where it's very clear and tractable, who for signed it, in what mm -hmm. version, etc. Uh, for now, we can create certificates. You can imagine that as a diploma for a university or uh, for uh, a proof of work for a, a, an activity like today or an hackathon um, for a bill. Then there, it depends on your imagination. Our demo will be about uh, certification, but you can uh, create a various template as you wish. Then uh, you can use the template. And also, there's a signature part. You can ask for a signature. Then if other people sign it, then it could be an agreement, any kind of agreement. Um, Should we show your demo and then maybe we can... Yeah, we can after demo it could be more clear. Yeah, this is, the, mm -hmm. this is the beginning of the... Uh, this is the home page actually. Uh, for logging or for sign up, uh, you need to have a MetaMask wallet because uh, this is how it works. Uh, for registration and for payment and for other things. You but you don't just email the password. Yeah. For now, you don't need to concern about it. In this part, without logging, uh, you can verify a document and just uh, click here and drag and drop or just uh, choose a file from uh, any, uh, any of those files you have. For now, I, I didn't uh, download the latest uh, files. We will create and then uh, validate. Then I will log in with MetaMask wallet. This is uh, the page you will see, but except uh, this workflows. And here you will start. You need to start from form part. You need to create a form. This is the button that you can create, uh, provide you that ability uh, for demo form. Uh, I will use a current. Uh, form for this one. These are the components that we can use. Uh, we can just click here and uh, just try and drop other side and create uh, various type of forms. These are familiar from uh, forms probably you will 
you have been seeing uh, those kind of forms previously. Uh, <coughs> for our certificate, we will need a participant's name and a team name. This, uh, this is another type of uh, property, another type of sort of component, and uh, we fill the, the options here. This is like a select box. Uh, when we save this part, then we will uh, come to the template part. This was a uh, data hectare span, and this is the template part. Uh, we need to open the, the same form template. Here uh, you can see the uh, you can see variables. These are uh, important. Then you you need to uh, copy these variables and paste them into the document into your template. Uh, we already created the template. This is the template, and you can just uh, click here and. Uh, find a file from your computer for your from your local and upload it, or uh, just drag and drop. And this is the template. Uh, my participants is here in this part, and uh, team name is in this part. When I fill the form in in uh, with some content, it will be reflected to the form uh, to the template, and we we'll, we can check it. That, that input dot participants is here, and therefore Alex, uh, the name is uh, reflected to the same place. And for team, I can just uh, check any of the any of the, the team. This is just an example; it's not real. Therefore, uh, just randomly pick one of them. And here, I can see the uh, the document how it look like looks like. And I'm happy with that. Then I uh, I can continue. I save it and I can continue for for workload parts. Uh, you can select their uh, select the items or uh, the components from uh, this part. It should start with start. Then uh, with our form, we already did that. Form is here, and just uh, for making it more clear, maybe I can. Uh, delete the connection. Yeah, you, you can drag and drop uh, that uh, items here, then uh, you can connect them basically like a simple tool. This is not necessary for our case. And after saving, uh, we can run the workflow. Then we can uh, fill uh, original data as we want and a team name after that we can go to the next uh, step additional data uh, is not uh, important part in this case then uh, this in this step uh, we will be asked for a payment after confirmation uh, and a few seconds we'll the document will be recorded to the blockchain network and we will have a, a small data and I don't know how I can say it. a small data will be recorded to the, uh, the system hash 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 but uh, okay digital signature mm -hmm. and then uh, this will be used for uh, verification here uh, there are a few options. This is for make it more visible or just for preview. And this uh, button for uh, downloading it as a PDF. And this is download for as a word. And the most important part for make it more valid, uh, you can ask for signature. For now, uh, I'm asking for a signature from Oleg. And now we will. Uh, have a document and signature requested. Now, if he uh, accept of or if he sign, we will be a new status. Status sign instead of pending. So I can check it and I sign it. Looks mm -hmm. okay. And again, there's this, what, so what we're paying is a, what's known as a gas fee. It's a very, very small amount of money that is required by this particular blockchain 
to make an entry in the blockchain. And that's it, it's signed. It, takes a, it also takes a few minutes for the document to process. But is it possible? No, sorry, my computer's. Where is the document stored? I mean, it's not on the blockchain, I guess. No, no, no. It's separate. It's, it's stored uh, locally on the server mm -hmm. until you you delete it or you, it expires. Mm -hmm. um, and only the hash, a tiny cryptographic yes, signature is in the blockchain. Yeah. yeah. Now you can see the status is changed, signed. And uh, for, for this step, if you imagine Oleg as a professor in the university, is correct, <laughs> and uh, he can give diploma and sign it on his personal account uh, or an official account actually. Uh, then it will be a diploma, and when people download the PDF, that their document, they will be seen like that for some uh, instructions to how to validate it. Now we will do this part. For validation or for verification, uh, by the way, we can see all documents here uh, and for the questions answer. Uh, these are all documents we created. Even if we delete those documents, still we can validate. For verification, inside of an uh, app, if you log in, you can uh, find the verification button at the, le at the left side. And you can select the PDF or drag and drop, then you will see a uh, document is valid. And if you look at the details, you can see file hash number and signers. And you can check uh, on the site of uh, any official account. For example, if it would be a uh, diploma, you will see this uh, has been signed by Oleg and you can uh, see his address in this official address and you can compare and this was just a certificate you can use it for generating diploma making agreement like someone selling his car someone buying and with uh, that agreement template you can uh, use that uh, workflow for many people and they can uh, fill out the form like car model uh, age, color, and numbers, etc. Then you can uh, ask for signature request from that people who buy or sell. Then when they sign it, okay, you don't need to go to police office and do some uh, boring stuff. Or I mean, one of the most spectacular demos that Proxius made when it was still a company. I don't know if you, you guys really understood the context from the beginning. So this was a commercial and very very successful ICO, initial coin offering. There was a bit of a mistake on the first slide. So it's, it, there was a doubt, but it was a very successful ICO. So they raised funds while all these blockchain projects a few years ago were having a very hype moment. Um, and the company um, was closed for, for various reasons uh, in 2020, just around the corona hit. And Proxy Association was established here at Daffinger to continue maintaining the product in open source form. So it was commercial before, everything you saw was part of a commercial product. Now it's an open source. So to your question, where's the data stored? It's wherever the heck you want to store the data. So you install it on your machine, your laptop, or on some server, and that's where the data is stored. And Proxy Association maintains it. But one of their, one of their biggest um, customers or most important demos was the Handelsregister of the Canton of Zug. So it was the process of registering a company that was um, seen as very interesting. And the idea that you could shorten the time from several weeks or days to minutes, to hours or minutes to register a company was um, was part of the, I, thought, I think we don't need to show people Docker Hub, but yeah, Docker Hub is right now the easiest way to kind of install it on your laptop. Right? Yeah. But let's let's try to let's try to use some some minutes to remaining to to do a bit of discussion. Mm -hmm. um, there is also a Medium blog, so if you go medium.com/proxius, there's a lot of um, stories like from us uh, and starting from 2020. That's me, Vivian, Ibrahim, a couple of other people. Before that, you can learn about the other things the company was doing.
And since I wanted to show how uh, I made on uh, in Docker Hub. Ah, sure. Yeah. This is uh, this is the main uh, repo of uh, our application, Proxius, Proxius Core, and with uh, one over one million uh, one million uh, download, uh, you can see type in another <laughs> aspect. Yeah. Quite a responsibility to manage this uh, big big project, but we're a very small association. But Ibrahim uh, joined shortly after completing a power coders course and he's been doing an internship since January. So you've seen him working at Adfinger on, and everything you just saw in this demo has been made partially possible through his work and his support of last month. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Ibrahim. Nice to be part. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did that in, in the beginning, therefore, maybe. So we've got eight minutes so some of you need to go. I would really love to see the two of you. Maybe if NSC could also come up and maybe answer some. Thank, thank you, Ibrahim. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to ask you, how do you see your worlds connecting? You talked about cyber, you talked about information. Where is the best chance for, for us here to, like, what, what do you think we should do today to improve our security awareness? Yeah, I see security is connected to nearly every a part of, not just IT, every part of our life. We should aware all of us, even we are not working in IT world, we should aware what's happening. It's I think it's mandatory nowadays for for our children, for every every for everyone to secure our information. Information security is important nowadays because all informations are nearly all information are digital, mm -hmm. like this complex. I think we we are human, but in in these days we have a kind of uh, digital reflection, but not in one place, in maybe thousands of places, every uh, so every place, social media, and like uh, every point that we touch, and that means information is now people, and for security part. I think most important part is being aware how dangerous could it be because if we lose our data, if we lose our information, that means we lose our uh, control. Someone else can use us like the puppet as I said before. And most important step, step is awareness. I think the uh, if we understand the danger, how could it be? Then uh, this culture, that from the beginning of the presentation, will uh, be uh, built, and then we, we will not need to be concerned about our future, our data, our security, our existence in digital world. So is it, is it a bit like some, we used to say the information superhighway? That, I think that term is now out of out of use. But you, would you say it's like a bit like with roads? I mean, we know that roads are dangerous; people get killed every day on roads. But we also know how to be aware of traffic as we cross the street yeah. every day, or send our children to school, or you know, we calculate the risks a bit like as a matter of habit rather than having to worry about it every day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Good example. How safe is a password manager? Depends on password manager. What would you recommend? Yeah, yeah we can also say how safe a door lock, uh, a, a thief can open it, but we use it to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. Nothing is safe. There is no safe system. 
but uh, we should make uh, we should harden the systems for uh, for cyber criminals. We we don't uh, leave the door open. But isn't it a door to all the passwords? I mean, aren't then all the passwords in that one place, and somebody just has to hack it and then has it all? Uh, somebody can open the door, but uh, find uh, the passwords uh, like. They are not uh, stay there unencrypted. Okay. Can I add here something about Bitwarden? Bitwarden is an open source uh, password manager, and they encrypt your keys, your your password actually in into their uh, data center, and they don't know what your password is. That means it's secure, and until they broke uh, that uh, encryption uh, function of that SHA-256. For now, this is the latest version, I think. And it was, it was hacked yesterday. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, so B Bitwarden is the product that, that I'm quite a fan of because it's, it's, it's like proxies, it's open source. They have a commercial offering, so you can pay Bitwarden. Or you can just download it and run it on your own local server. Um, and one password is one on the left. That's kind of the most popular product. So a lot of IT departments, a lot of companies yeah. in, in Switzerland. I also use that. Use one password. And then there's there's tons of alternatives like KeePass. That's quite quite a small popular app that people use, and that just keeps your password in your machine. Nice. KeePass is hacked. Um, no, Bitwarden, I mean, it wasn't a spe spectacular hack you hear the news about. It's more that, like, one, you know, the popular deployment method used to, to install Bitwarden was, was, was proven to be compromised, like, literally this week. And, you know, the point is, it's, 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 always, it's always moving target, you know. These, these fixes, they will get, these problems, they get fixed, and, you know. And a lot of people, yeah, they have IT departments, right, to keep installing patches and keep you safe. And if you're a freelancer, you maybe don't have an IT person, unless it's a friendly IT person, you know, in the co-working space. There's one in the corner there, for example. <laughs> Always, you know. But that's that's the thing. You've got you, there's a lot of choices, and ultimately you need to be comfortable in your computing environment, and you know, and, and maybe in a in this network. So maybe just to give a little bit of advertising for the FBI on there, uh, here or the the community members here. We have a channel in the Affinger Slack called InfoSec. We're still only seven people, so please join us. You'll see Ibrahim, myself, Marcos, thank you for joining us, Stefan, and a couple of others. And the idea is that we just have a, a Slack channel to help you to answer any questions you have, to recommend password managers, or share with you the latest and greatest tips from the Swiss government in particular, they've been since the beginning of the year constantly under cyber attacks. And so the, um, the, the, the federal administration, they're under a lot of pressure right now because they're so much target now of, of cyber threat. So ex I expect good things. I'm positive. I think this is a good thing for them to be under pressure. It hopefully leads to good tools. Like, for example, the, the Swiss uh, government's Proxius service. It's not Proxius, but this is exactly what Ibrahim just demoed. Just the service that is used by the Swiss government to validate their documents. I mean, this is right now only accessible to members of government. But the fact that it's there and it's being used and it's important, the message is spreading. People are going to start taking more care about their digital signatures. So here you can check whether a document that you have from the government is actually really from the government. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone can check, but only the government can issue those. Correct. Mm -hmm. That means maybe in a close feature we can create our own documents and put it, sign them and make them valid. For now, you cannot just sign an online document with Proxius because they don't know who you are, just there are some numbers. But maybe in a close feature, they will know who you are, who is this number. And what does that mean? Do people accept this agreement or something else? If you have an electronic ID, so to yeah. speak, which the population mm -hmm. decided that the government should de develop this and not public uh, private organizations. That 
uh, a few weeks ago there were a hackathon that, uh, called Open Legal Lab. They were a team, they were uh, trying to solve a problem, or not a problem, trying to make something easier, like credentials. They were trying to import a, a credential, but in a secure way for uh, some people. It's in one aspect, it's similar to uh, what we are trying to do, because they, totally they will be something that one by one, it doesn't make sense maybe, but with that credential things. And, and that, uh, all the tools are getting smarter. I mean, like if you're using Gmail, you might just click on the on the name of the person. So here I got an email from Urbana Dörfer, you know, and then here I can see the Sicherheit. I, I can I can click here on Informationen, and I can check that. I mean, Google is basically giving me some some inf I, 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 explaining to me why I should be able to trust this email, and also the same thing is this little this little um, lock at the top of every browser. You know, it's giving you details, and it's it's not that you can just trust this information, but you know, I think this uh, the you know all this software on IT infrastructure we're using is going to improve, it is improving, and if we're a little bit proactive, a little bit learn some of the easy methods to check that the emails are genuine and documents are genuine, it would help. But yeah, um, I we need to really close the brown bag because people need to get back to work. Any last questions or thoughts? All right, thank you very much, Jonas and Ibrahim, and to all of you, please take a baccalaureate on your way out as you tailgate back into the co-working space. Okay. <laughs>